wants a good job done on the survey? The title company. Nope, the title company doesn't care. The bank. The bank wants a good job on the survey. Why does the bank want a good job? The title company will find the cheapest. They're the ones that are out the money. Of no That's money. right. And this is what, this is the business lesson about land title surveys. Title companies could give two craps. They just want the money. They want the fastest, cheapest guy. And like, look, who does, what does the sell? does the seller's broker or agent want a good title survey that's going to find problems? No. Because that's going to sink the deal. They don't want, they want a guy that's going to look the other way. And they want, and listen, the two real estate agents, they want the fastest, cheapest guy. Because what are they trying to do? Make the deal. Close the deal and get their commission, right? There's only mm -hmm. two people that have any remote interest in getting a good job on that title survey. The, the bank and the buyer. Sometimes even the buyer's agent is more worried about getting the deal closed and getting their commission than getting a good job on the survey. Okay, unless they're a good agent and they're and they're looking out for the long-term interests of their company of their client. Because guess who else gets sued besides the title company and the surveyor when there's a problem? The buyer's agent and the seller's agent. They sue everybody. Why? Because they're trying to get. Whoever they can, that's how the legal system, you throw a big net and you try and just get, because guess what? The agents carry what, too? Insurance. They carry insurance, too. So you want everybody's insurance policy on the hook. Why would it be the agent's fault? They're just the one. Okay, so let's just, so, so I'll give it it's a good example. It's a whole different topic, but I'll keep up, give you a quick example. So you go out to buy a commercial property and you're out with your agent. And uh, let's just say you have a, you have a reasonably sophisticated buyer. And the buyer says, hey, this is a beautiful piece of property. I think it's a good price. Um, where's the property corners? And the agent says, oh, you see that, that little indent in the road over there? That's one of your corners. And then that one over there is the other. Or they say, oh, hey, here's the assessor's map. This shows you. And they give them the tax assessor's map. Right? What did that buyer just expose himself to? Lies. Of, of Liability. Yeah. Because he made statements that he wasn't qualified to make, and the buyer relied on him. And I'll tell you what, you know what kind of legal relationship a real estate agent has to his buyer? Or a lawyer has to his buyer? It's like the highest level of loyalty and care that you can have in America, except for like maybe your surgeon. Like your job as that buyer's agent is to put his interest first. Wow. Above and beyond your own. So if you make false statements, it doesn't even have to be false statements. If you make statements to that guy that are incorrect because you were outside your area expertise and your buyer relies on them and it turns out to harm him, you are on. Brokers and agents get sued for that every year and they go to court and lose. Okay? Or I'll give you, let's say there's a land title survey and I give the buyer, I give the buyer the land title survey and I say, hey, looks pretty good except for on this one line down here. There's some problems in your deed and, and your deed and the neighbor's deed don't match and there's some uncertainty here and man, you know, you might want to look into that. And the title insurance company says, uh, yeah, we'll insure it. And the buyer, the buyer goes to his agent and he says, man, I, you know, the title insurance company said they, they would insure this, but I'm nervous. Like, Landon's a good surveyor. He's telling me there might be a problem here. Okay? But the agent wants to get his commission, so what does he tell his buyer? Ah, Landon, he's always paranoid, dude. Don't worry about it. That surveyor, he just, you're going to be fine. The title insurance company said they cover it. Let's say they put that in an email. Okay? And then the buyer buys it, and there's a problem on that south line. What's the buyer going to do? Pull up that email. He's going to sue that agent, and he's going to show him that email. Right? So what's the smart? If I say, hey, there's a potential problem here. You need to look at this. And I show it on my land title server, and I put a note on there. What's the smart thing for the buyer's agent to do? What's he need to tell his buyer? Yes, sir. Hey, call Landon. Let's figure out how to clean this up. He's telling you there's some uncertainty here, right? Now, the buyer might decide, hey, I'm comfortable with this level of risk. You know, it's only a couple feet. I'm not doing anything on that half of the property anyways, right? We're good. Well, if, if you're a smart buyer, what are you getting writing from your client? Contract. Well, at a minimum, you give them a letter in writing that which says, hey, surveyor found this problem. It's noted on the title survey. I recommend that you pursue a resolution, right? And you, you, you need to be able to prove in writing to a judge that you warned your client and they took that risk. It's okay for the client to take the risk, because whose risk is it? His risk or her risk, right? Okay, so we got a little sidetracked, but the point is, right, my job with a land title survey is to find what? Potential Any property. potential mm -hmm. problems. That's why we're out there to find problems. Do sellers like that? No. no.
Okay, do agents and brokers like that? No. no. But the banks and the buyers like it. Again, put yourself in the shoes of somebody that's going to buy a $10 million property in San Francisco, and you hire me. Why do you hire me? Because I'm good looking? So why don't banks make them get a survey on residentials? Because there's a cost to it, and the average transaction value isn't high yeah, enough. Oh yeah. The risk isn't now. Here's what's happening. Only commercial. Here's what's happening in California, though. In California, a lot of properties now, residential properties, are worth more than commercial properties. Like if you're buying a home in San Jose on the hill, that's worth more than the 7-Eleven on the corner down here. Mm. And it's just a stupid system. People haven't figured that out yet, right? And they're still not making them. Most residential properties so are not. Dollar amount. It should, but it doesn't. It should. That would that would be a smart way to do it. Mm. Okay. Now here's the other problem we have. A lot of times, does does the bank or the buyer know the difference between a good land title survey and a bad land title Neither. survey? Neither. No. So part of what yeah. we, part of what we've got to do is we're going to educate some of our local banks and brokers and agents about hey, here's what a good survey looks like. Here's what a bad survey looks like. Because who's really has the vested interest in getting a good survey? The bank. The bank and the buyer. Mm -hmm. Does the listen? Even if the buyer can sue somebody and get his money, is that what he wants? No. No, it's going to delay his project, and he's going to have to hire an attorney, and there's no certainty that he's going to win. The buyer would rather get a property without problems or know ahead of time what he was walking into. That's why most of the time we work for the buyer. Now, there are some sophisticated clients, I'm going to tell you, I've had two of them in the last year, that come to me and say, hey, we're getting ready to put a property on the market, and we want to know right now, before we put it on the market, if we've got any problems. So we're going to hire you to do a land title survey before we even have a buyer. And part of the reason they do that is because when they, what do you got to figure out before you put your property on the market? You got to figure out how much to what? Price it. So when they get the survey, what does that help them do? Very accurate number. It helps them price the property. If you got a survey that comes back with some problems, is your price going to be the same? No. Probably shouldn't be. So they say, so some very sophisticated buyers say, hey, before we even put this thing on the market, let's go get a land title survey. Right? They hire me to do the survey. Okay? So I just did this in Menlo Park on a couple office parks. Right, multi-million dollar properties. The seller, the, the seller hired me to do the title survey. We did the title survey. Nine months later, they called me and said, hey, we got a buyer. They've seen your survey, they'd like a couple updates. So then we worked for the buyer and updated the survey. But that's a sophisticated seller. Not a lot of sellers do that. It'd just be like, you know, if you're gonna sell your, if I was gonna sell my Dodge Ram, before I go put it up, I wash it, wax it, clean it, right? Maybe I replace a, you know, dented, Fenders, like you spruce that baby up before you put it on the market. So some people will do that. Okay. So was that a good refresher on land title surveys? Yeah. Do you understand a little bit about how title works? All right, my hour is probably up. We'll talk some more. We'll we'll get an example title report. We'll look at it. We'll look at the title report. We're getting a new title report for Tracy. Cool. We'll sit down and look at it. We'll go through all the exceptions and we'll look at it. Okay. All right. Okay. Danny can go on clog his sewer.